Does body mass index matter when trying to win a world's strongest man title? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Ciao, homie! Welcome to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring attention to the world of strongman and show you how you can mimic those activities using everyday objects all around your own property. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and remember to hit that bell button for all notifications so you'll know whenever I provide all the valuable content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So without further ado, on to today's topic. So in recent videos, I've talked about how much height matters and how much weight matters going through each and every winner of the World's Strongest Man from 1977 to 2020. And today we're going to talk about whether BMI matters. So what is BMI? Well, it stands for Body Mass Index. And if we go look that up on Google, Body Mass Index or BMI is listed as mass over height squared. And why do I care about BMI? I care because you can have somebody who is 6'2", 350 pounds, and somebody who is 6'8", 380 pounds who weighs more, but they don't weigh more as a function of their height, right? They're not, they weigh more because they're taller, but they're not thicker uh, because they're so tall. So we want to talk about body mass index. And if you use this formula, it'll tell you like who was actually the more robust guy. And we can look at how well they placed in that particular world's strongest man and if they won. So just as a point of reference, let's take a BMI tool and I'll put myself in. So I'm five foot eight. And about 183, so I'll compute my BMI. I'm not especially skinny, I'm not especially huge. 27.8, so that's what a, you know, slightly thicker than average guy's BMI would be, 27.8. And so, if we were to now take a look at my block strongest encyclopedia, which you've now seen a few times, and we go back and look at the BMIs of all the winners of World Strongest Man starting in 1977 and going forward, we can see kind of how thick and robust these guys were for their height. So Bruce Wilhelm, who won 1977 in Universal Studios, California, had a BMI of 42.5. Remember, mine was 27. So all of these guys are much, much, much more giant in every dimension that I am, right? Uh, so he repeated in 1978. Don Ridehout won in 1979 with a higher BMI than Bruce. His is 44.6. Bill Kazmaier then begins his dominance in 1980, 81, and 82, and he had a BMI of 41.9. Jeff Capes, who was a taller guy and a heavier guy, also had a higher BMI. So he was not just heavier than Bill, but heavier by enough that he's uh, considered thicker than Bill, which is strange because I don't remember them that way, but apparently so by the BMI calculation. 43.3 for Jeff Capes, which is still less than Don Reinhout. Then we have John Paul Sigmerson, who's known for his physique and being kind of more ripped, and so his BMI was 36.6. He started winning in 1984. Then we have Jeff Capes, who repeats in 1985, and then Sigmerson repeats in 86 and 88, remembering that there was no World's Strongest Man competition in 1987. So... Then we have Jamie Reeves in 1989, and his BMI was 41.4. You'll notice most of the guys are above 40. Sigmerson repeats again in 1990, and again, he's 36.6. And then we see Magnus Ver Magnuson come on the scene as an equipment tester who ends up winning the whole competition at 35.9, one of the lowest BMIs of all the competitors. But not to be outdone, Ted Vanderpar is 353 pounds, but because it's on a seven-foot frame, he's actually comes out slightly more slender, if you will, than Magnus Ver Magnuson. So he is at 35.2. Um, some websites will say he has the lowest BMI of any winner ever, but it's not the way I calculated it, and we'll see. I have a few that are lower. Uh, Gary Taylor at six feet tall and 295 is a BMI of 40. And then we have Magnus Ver Magnuson repeating three more times to round out his four wins. Yoko Ahola wins his first title in 1997, and he was 36.4, so a light guy, 276, but at 6'1", that's 36.4. 
Uh, Sweden's Magnus Samuelsson, one of my favorite strongmen of all time, 39.7. He wins in 1998 in Morocco. And if we scroll down a bit more, Yoko Ohola repeats again in 1999. And the beginning of the 2000s, Starts with Yanni Virtanen, 34, so he's lower than Ted Vanderpar. And I don't know if I'm getting the wrong weight online for Yanni. If I do, tell me in the comments below for sure. Definitely want to be corrected on that one, but 287 seems really light for a 6'5 strongman. Uh, Sven Carlson, 282, but only at 6'2, so he is 36.2. Still a low BMI compared to some of these other guys. Then we have Marius Pujanowski with the beginning of his five wins in 2002 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and his BMI is 41.3. He wins again in 2003. Vazil Virstuk interrupts the empire of Pujanowski in 2004, and he had a BMI of 40 right on the dot. Pujanowski wins again in 2005, the third of his five wins. Phil Fister with a BMI of 43.3, relatively high, tall and heavy guy, wins in Sanya, China in 2006. And if we scroll down a bit more, Pujanowski gets his next two wins in 2007-2008. Again, 41.3 for him. And then we start getting the massive BMIs. Zadruna Saviskis, Big Z, the, you know, considered the best strongman of all time, has four World Strongest Man wins, and his BMI at 63401 is a whopping 50.1. There's not a lot of guys that go over the 50 mark. A small, small number, as you'll see. So he repeats in 2010, and then he starts to alternate with his great rivalry, his storied rivalry with Brian Shaw, who is still a whopping 48.3 BMI. Not over 50, but still very, very high. And so they go back and forth for a series of years between 2009 and 2016. And then 2017, the famous World Strongest Man win by Eddie Hall after the controversial Viking press with Thor. Uh, controversial only to Thor because the rest of us all know Eddie Hall did everything on the level. Um, but Eddie Hall, with the highest BMI of anybody I've ever seen, on this list, first, second, or third place at the Arnold's the World's Strongest Man Anywhere. We'll, we'll look at my the rest of my encyclopedia in future videos, but 54.1, believe it or not. And Eddie's been really outspoken about saying he felt like he had to weigh as much as these giants to beat them, uh, like Thor and like Brian. And so he went up to 433 pounds at, I say 6'3 here, Eddie says he's 6'2 and 3 quarters, so close enough. But that's a lot of weight for that height. Um, not that he's short. That's really tall compared to me. But 433 pounds, 54.1 BMI. And, you know, it's evidenced in the fact that he's been slimming down since he retired and weighs nowhere near that now. So then we have Half the War winning in 2018, his only World's Strongest Man win. And his BMI, very high as well, 48.4. And it's so interesting that Half Thor and Brian's BMIs are a tenth of a point apart. And, you know, to kind of think about how successful those two have both been and whether there's a correlation there. Um, we'll, we'll look at a trend in a moment and see if there's a correlation. So then we have Martins Lisi's at only a BMI of 42.5, winning in 2019. So kind of bringing the average back down again after really, really high BMIs for lots of years. And then Alexei Novikov dives under the 40 mark with 39.3, our 2020 World's Strongest Man winner in the competition that just ended about a week and a half ago. So now we want to determine... Now that we know what every, every winner's BMIs are, does it have an impact? So if we go back up to 1977, let's look at guys who had multiple wins. And that's this column D right here. So guys that had multiple wins. Bruce Wilhelm won two times with a BMI of 42.5. Bill Kazmaier, 41.9, won three times. Sigmerson, a uh, considerably lower BMI than those two guys, won four times. And then we have... Jeff Capes, who won twice in uh, 43.3. Uh, we have Magnus Ver Magnuson at only 35.9, won four World's Strongest Man titles. And 
jokingly when asked says like yeah i'm the greatest strongman of all time um he's in the discussion he's he's not considered by most the greatest big z is but he's in i mean four wins when you weren't expected to even win anything the first time you got to be in the discussion um and then you have yoko hola won two times with only a bmi of 36.4 and then we have pujanowski at 41.3 won five titles and then we go into Big Z and Brian, so they're very high BMIs, multiple title winners for each. And then those were the last of the multiple winners. So we've had, from 2017 on, Eddie, Thor, Martins, and Alexi, all single-time winners so far. We'll see what Novikov does in the future. So does BMI guarantee you a win in World's Strongest Man? It seems like no. There's uh, just as many guys that are on the lower end for a strong man, still ex- exceptionally high for a regular guy, but on the lower end for a strong man, there's just as many like Sigmerson and Novikov um, and Ver Magnuson as there are guys at the very high end like Big Z and Brian Shaw and Thor. So, so far, I don't see like a big correlation there. Let's see what the averages are, uh, just out of curiosity. So if we look at my mean column, which is the average, the average BMI of all World's Strongest Man winners is 41.8. Uh, so pretty high, uh, you know, not Brian Shaw high and not Sigmerson low, but pretty high. And then the median would be if we took all those values, lined them up in order from lowest to highest, what would be the value in the middle? And that's 41.3, so close to the average. And then kind of what is the value that occurs most often? 41.3, same. So not a lot of deviation in these three numbers. And that seems to be what it takes to win World's Strongest Man, to be somewhere around that that area. Although you have guys that won multiple titles not being around that area. Um, so let's have a look at our charts one more time. And in previous videos, we looked at the height chart and the weight chart. And now I want to put those two things together and say, you know, not only does does height matter to win World's Strongest Man, meaning like, for example, are you tall enough to put an Atlas stone on a high podium? Does weight matter, meaning are you heavy enough to pull a truck and make it move because you weigh enough? But if you take those two things together, BMI, like the robustness and the thickness of your body for the height that you are, does that matter? And so if we look at the trends that we've seen over the years, we can see here the winner BMIs seem to have been like around this low 40-ish range and then for many years took a dive down like with fluctuations of course in between but stayed really low for many years and then you know starting off with I would say here Marius from then on it just went into a like a giant increase and with Martins and Novikov diving back down but I think it's going to take many years for that to um you know, cause the trend to stop the way it is. So the uh, that's where we are, and hope you found this interesting, and we'll catch you again next time. So if you like this video and want to learn more about any of the products I described during this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.